Yes, sir. So we're going to talk about the anointing of King David. When David was anointed king, we're going to talk about partial revelation versus full re revelation. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this this uh, partial revelation versus full revelation. Okay. And the perfect example to really discuss this is going to come out of when David got when when, when God told Samuel to anoint David the king. Okay. With major principles in here that a lot of times people. You know, they, they just gloss right over, okay? The one thing about this message I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't understand how God communicates with you, if you don't understand what it is to hear from the Lord, you know what I'm saying? You you first going to have to hear and understand, going to have to learn that. If you don't believe that God communicates with, with mankind, that God can speak to you and tell you something, then you might as well, you might as well just cut, cut this off and go on. Now, as I said to you, there's a couple of different ways that God will communicate and speak to you. One, he can speak to you directly through the Holy Spirit. You'll hear it in your spirit, right? The Lord will tell you something, right? Two, dreams and visions. The Lord will show you something, speak to you in a dream, tell you something in a dream. Three, he can send you a prophet who will speak in the name of the Lord, right? And if the thing comes to pass, you know what God said it. But if it don't come to pass, you don't blame God. You know that you've been dealing with a false prophet, okay? And four, the way God can always speak to you sometimes is just so much as pick this book up. You see what I'm saying? He can he can speak things to you and reveal things to you just in your reading and in your study. Okay? So you have to understand the ways in which God will communicate with you. That's that's key and that's, that's important. You have to understand God's principles, right? And that's the problem that a lot of people don't understand God's principles, and then so they just jump up and they start assuming that God is saying something that, that God didn't specifically say. All right, so that's this is what we're going to address. All right, so first, let's go to our first scripture. We're going to go to, uh, we only got a couple. We're not going to drag this out too long. We got 1 Corinthians. We're going to go chapter 13. We're going to hit verses 9, 10, and 11, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to hit verses 9, 10, and 11. So you can see what I'm talking. That's chapter 13. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to go verses 9, 10, and 11, okay? For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, okay? But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away, all right? When God tells you things, sometimes, and I'm going to show y'all this, okay? Sometimes when God tells you something, he'll tell you in part. He don't tell you the full revelation. He'll tell you part. And we prophesy in part, right? But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child... I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man and got more understanding, I put away childish things. Okay? That things that I knew partially, as I get more understanding, I start push, putting the partial things away because I now have a, a more of an understanding, more of a revelation. Okay? All right. So now we're going to go and we're going to give an example of what happened with this. So if you will, we can go to we're gonna go to 1 Samuel, we're gonna hit chapter 16. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 16. Alright, so let's go. As you can see, we're in 1 Samuel. We're gonna pick it up, chapter 16. Okay? So now let's 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 explain what we talk about knowing in part and all this type of stuff, and then we'll get into why it's important for you to understand this. Okay? First chapter chapter 16. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him, right, from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay? So God just told Samuel, The king is among the sons of Jesse. Right? That's what he told him. And specifically what he told him. I have provided me a king among his sons. So now Samuel knows who the king, and as we said, as we talked about when we first started, the Lord said unto Samuel, he told him something. See, if you don't believe God will say something to you, you already, you already in the, in the dark. See, a lot of people don't even believe that God even speaks to man anymore, that he, he can only speak to you by, by a, by a prophet or something else that he won't speak directly to you. And that's a bold faced lie. That's why you need to receive the Holy Spirit. Because once you receive the Holy Spirit, God will begin to speak and communicate with you. That's why you want to be reconciled back to God. So instead of you running around here trying to figure everything out on your own, the Lord can tell you things. 
the Lord said unto Samuel, this is what I want done, Samuel. I want you to go to Jesse's because I have the, I'm going to anoint, I want you to anoint me the next king over Israel, right? All right, so Samuel says, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord, okay? So God told him how to get around Saul, okay? And call Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show thee. Now, this is what he says. Now, pay attention to this. I will show thee what thou shalt do and thou shalt, you shall anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. You anoint to me who I tell you is the king, right? You anoint to me who I tell you. So he's got a partial revelation that the king is amongst Jesse's son. But now when you get there, I'm going to tell you exactly who it is, right? This is why we say we prophesy in part. God may give us a partial revelation. He gave Samuel a partial revelation. The king is among Jesse's sons. But now Samuel, what we're going to see is what he does. He takes that partial revelation and he starts acting on it. And he doesn't pay attention to the full instructions of which he was given. Okay? Because God said, you anoint to me whom I name unto you, who I tell you. Okay? So let's go back to the scripture. All right? Verse 4. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake. Right? And he came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab, Eliab, okay, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him, right? So he looks on Eliab. And says, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So guess what he just did? He assumed. You see that? He's got partial information. Okay, I know it's one of Jesse's sons. This guy, oh, oh, it's got to be him. So he assumes. He takes it upon himself to, to, to say, oh, okay, this must be him. So I'm going to anoint him. Right? So now look what happens after that. Okay? But the Lord said unto Samuel, oh, whoa, 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 bro. What you think you're doing? Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. So it ain't about his outer appearance. It ain't about how tall he is. It ain't got nothing to do with that. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Okay? So when it comes to someone who God chooses and who he anoints, you can forget trying to look at outer statuses. You can forget trying to look at statures. You can forget trying to figure it out based off your outer assumptions. Because God is looking at the heart. And some people think you know people's heart and you don't know their heart. They may have a wicked heart right now, but God's like, that heart is not like that. They, I, I see that there's good in this man. Right? This, you can look at somebody and think they got good, they got, they're nice, and they're good. And, they're, and that's the reason why a lot of people get tripped up with false pastors, fake, fake prophets, and all this type of stuff. Because you assume this person is good. The wolf in sheep clothing. Right? You look on the outer appearance, you assume that this guy is good. And guess what? And in your assumption, you start listening, and you get deceived, and this ravenous wolf will deceive you and take your money from you. You see? You start, you know, even in Dayton, you start looking, you think this woman is pretty, you're looking on her outer appearance, surely this is the one for me. And you go jump up and you get with her, and guess what? You got the raven and wolf that one day is going to turn around and stick a knife in your back and kill you. You see? All because you assume. You don't pray and you don't ask and you don't talk to the Lord and say, one question. One question. God bless you, bro. One question, is this you? Father, is this you? Right? So he tells Samuel, I God already told him, I'm going to tell you who it is. But Samuel is taking it upon himself to figure it out on his own. Okay? So now let's go back to scripture. All right? 
So the Lord tells him, don't look on that countenance or on the height of a statue because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. So now Jesse calls the next son and make him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. So he's bringing all of his sons there. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord have not chosen these. Right? So God ain't chosen them. Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse. Okay? So let's stop right there. Okay? So now, they go through this whole process of trying to figure everything out on their own. And trying to figure out who God's anointed is. Who's the king? Oh, well, bring him up here. Okay, let's try on there. Okay, it ain't him. Let's try. Uh, it ain't him. Let's try. Uh, it ain't him. And guess what? A lot of you doing that in your personal lives and in your relationships. You see what I'm saying? A lot of you in your relationships, you're doing the same thing. You're trying to figure it out. Is it her? No, nope, it ain't her. Well, let's, is it her? No, nope, it ain't her. Is it her? No, it ain't her. A lot of you women doing the exact same thing. Are you? Is it, is it you? Is it him? No, it ain't him. Is, is, no, it ain't him. No, no, it ain't him. But you're not going to God based on whom the Lord will, uh, will name to you. Why? Because you have not developed your relationship with him to the point that he's speaking directly to you. Personal revelation is when God tells you something specifically. Just like when God told Samuel, I have an, uh, I got a king among Jesse's sons. Nobody else knows that but Samuel. So Samuel's going up there and they're thinking it's all about a sacrifice. And Samuel knows, no, it ain't about a sacrifice. I got to anoint the next king. Right? So he's going up there and when he goes up there, God said, and I'm going to tell you who it is. So instead of him going to God to figure out, God, who is it? They start trying to figure it out on their own. Right? But the one thing that we see that Samuel does, after they then went through all of this, and after all of the sons appear to be have brought before them, Jesse goes get all of the sons, the very one that he don't think that it could possibly be. He brings all the other sons, but leaves the one out there, well, I know it ain't him, he's the youngest. So he brings all of the sons there. Samuel don't know that he's got another son, but Samuel says, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. God told me as a king among one of your sons, you didn't had all of these boys come through here. Uh, Jesse, do you got another child? Do you got another son? And Jesse's like, yeah, the youngest. I mean, what we want? I mean, he's the youngest. He's out there. Yeah, he's out in the field. Well, call him. Call him in there. Right? So you see, Samuel still got faith because Samuel's got a personal revelation. The king is among Jesse's sons. Now, you done brought all of them to me except for one, and I didn't even know you had another one out here. I ain't even laid eyes on him. But there's got to be, there's got to be somebody. I know what I was told. So he goes and he says, Samuel, do you got another child? You got another son? Yeah, I got another one. All right, we'll bring him in here, right? Now, remember what God told them. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse 3, right? And God... And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. You will anoint unto me him whom I name unto you. I'm going to tell you who it is. Right? I am going to tell you who it is. Right? Who I've appointed. Okay? So now let's go to verse 11. Let's go back over to verse 11. Samuel says unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? He said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Let me turn the page. Right? Samuel says unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. All right? So send for him, because we ain't we're not going to move until he comes. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And remember what God told Samuel at the very start of this journey? You're going to anoint to me him who I tell you. And we see, once they finally stopped trying to figure everything out, once they got to the last one, 
before they could even try to go through that process of figuring it out, the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. So God still kept his promise and kept his word. He told you, I'm going to name it to you. But they went through this whole big old deal trying to figure it out because they knew impartial. They had Because Samuel had a partial revelation. He didn't have the full revelation. The full revelation was David, the son of Jesse, is the king, uh, is the next king of Israel. That was the full revelation. The partial revelation was the son, one of the sons of Jesse is the king of Israel. So you see, when running with the with the partial and trying to assume, you know what I mean, well, who it was that God had anointed, Samuel and Jesse would have anointed all of the wrong sons had God not, had God let them sit back and make the mistake. Had God said, nope, ain't him, ain't him, ain't him, ain't him, ain't him, ain't him. And, and here's the deal. How many of you will go into the grocery store? And I'm just going to ask you. How many of you will go into the grocery store and you're looking for an item, and you know sometimes they move stuff around. And you see one of the, the people working in there. Now, I do this all the time, because I don't, I don't like wandering around blindly and ignorant. If I see somebody in there, and I don't know where something is, I go up to the, to the person in the aisle where he's working and say, hey, uh, man, where's, where's, where's this, this box of cereal? Where's, where's that at? What aisle is that in? Oh, it's in aisle such and such and so. I go straight over there, get what I need, and get on out of there. You see what I'm saying? Why am I going to wander around 10 different aisles when I can just ask somebody where it is? Right? Why am I just going to wander around aimlessly just trying to, oh, well, I don't see it here. Well, let me go there. Oh, I'm just, oh, well, oh I'm going to do this. Why not just sit and ask somebody who knows? Right? When the scripture says a prudent wife is from the Lord, then not, where do you got to go to get a prudent wife? From the Lord. That's what it tells you. So if you got to go to the Lord, what God has put together, let not man have put together. I mean, let not man put asunder. And why don't you go to the Lord and ask him? You see, instead of Samuel and them, what's, what Samuel got there to Jesse's house? Why didn't he say, okay, Lord, I'm here. Which one is it? Which one is it? And why didn't he do it after the first time, after he, after he tried? He said, okay, surely it's Eliab. Okay, so yeah, bring him on over here, whatever. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't look on the outer appearance. I look on the heart. Okay, well, which one is it then? Okay, my bad. I made a mistake. Which one is it? No, they still didn't learn. They went through process after process. Well, bring him in. 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 They went through process after process instead of doing one simple thing. Uh, you told me you was going to name it to me. Which one is it? Who is it? Duh. You see what I'm saying? That's why you have to understand, you know what I'm saying? partial revelation versus full revelation and when that which is in full has come then that which is in part is done away with you see so you see they, they would have made a major major mistake by assuming whom God had appointed to be the king they would have made a major mistake right but God had already told them I'm going to tell you who it is but I just told you part of who it is right now I'm going to tell you the rest once you get there and instead of them just going to God and saying, okay, who it is, who is it, what did they do? They jumped up and tried to figure it out on their own. All right? Let me show you something else about appointments. Since, since a lot of people don't like to teach this, and they don't teach people squat in church, and that's why a lot of people don't know it, and you're, you're essentially wandering around out here, and your kids, and especially now, it's going to be worse because a lot of people don't believe. you got people falling away from the faith. So this younger generation really needs to understand this, because they need to understand what it is to seek the Lord's will, right? When you're seeking the Lord's will, you want to know exactly what God is talking about, exactly what God wants done. You don't want to sit up there, get partial revelation, and then all of a sudden start assuming the rest. That's not what you want to do. That's why I say a lot of people run out here and call themselves voting for the president. You don't know who, who, who's going to be a good one or a bad one. You don't know nothing. And what if God wants somebody in to persecute the people? You say, well, why would God want that? If he's ready to bring Israel out, 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 of, out of America, you see what I'm saying? He's going to raise up somebody to persecute him. And where you're trying to get somebody that's not going to do that, God may want somebody who's going to do that. Didn't he say, for this purpose, I raised up Pharaoh? You see? But when you start assuming things and thinking that you know everything and thinking you know what God is up to, you're missing everything that God is doing. And then when you don't get what you want, then guess what? Everybody's sitting up here all in an uproar over crap 
ready to fight and do all this other stuff, all because you lack understanding. Period. Okay? Let's go to uh, Genesis uh, 20, 24. Genesis 24. Yeah, I'm going to close. I'm going to close up with this. Just so I can show y'all an example of somebody, the only person we know in the Bible who got his appointed spouse, we know he got his appointed spouse, and it came through someone simply asking. He asked. It ain't hard to figure out. Just ask. You see what I'm saying? If you don't know something, go to the person who does know and ask him. All right? Let's go. Let's turn to the, let's go to Genesis 20, uh, chapter 24. Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, okay? Put, I pray thee, that thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord thy God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites. Why? Because they were cursed. God did not want Isaac to get with a cursed woman, right? Among whom I dwell. They worship faith, foreign gods, pagan gods, and all this stuff, stuff, you know, gods that wasn't true. God did not want his people mixing with the daughters of the Canaanites because he said they would turn their heart from following him. So Abraham, you know what I'm saying? Abraham was like, well, well, I ain't going to say that. I scratched that because this is before Moses gave them the laws. But the Canaanites were cursed because uh, Canaan, I mean, because uh, what Ham did and Noah had cursed Canaan. So they they still true. They still were cursed people. Abraham didn't want them getting with him. All right. So anyway, but thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Go back to my people. Get a son. Get a wife for my son Isaac. That's what he told his servant to do. The servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou take that thou. Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. Don't take him there. The Lord told us to come here. Do not take him back. Right? The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and which swear unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And you see what he said? The Lord that spake unto me. See, the Bible is about people that heard directly from God. See, these people that don't believe in God, that don't believe that God exists, they don't even understand nothing because they ain't never heard from God. They don't know God. But the purpose of you being reconciled by God, reconciled back to God is so that you can hear his voice, so that you can hear and get direct revelation from him. All right? So anyway, Abraham said, I got direct revelation. I knew him. And he says, until thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning his master, concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee. So now you see, he's praying. He's got the, he's, he's charged with the task of finding a wife for Isaac. He don't know who it is. So he says, well, okay, well, he said that, that, that his God was going to uh, lead me. So he said, well, let me pray to his God. O God of my master Abraham, I pray thee. So he's asking, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Right? And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Right? And we know the rest of the story. Whom you have appointed. Rebecca was appointed for Isaac because she came out and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rebecca came out who was born to Bethuel son of Milcai the wife of Nahor Abraham's brother with her pitcher upon her shoulder and the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin neither had any man known her and she went down to fill the well and she ended up saying exactly what he asked her asked the Lord to have her to say all right so he asked he asked the question he didn't assume he didn't go there and say, okay, let me just get the prettiest woman that I see. When he got there, he didn't know who to choose, so he prayed and he asked, Lord, reveal it to me who you've chosen. You see what I'm saying? Who you have appointed for this position. See, the person appointed 
even for to be the president of this land. That's a appointed position for God because God know what he's going to do with it. See, but a lot of people out here want to assume. They want to jump up and assume and try to try to push your will because of what you want. And you don't understand. You don't take God's will into consideration. And you'll make a mistake thinking you know everything. See, that's the difference between the people who know God and hear God's voice. We know that we're about doing God's will. And if God's will is to put somebody in, I don't care if he's racist. I don't care if he's homosexual. I don't care what he is. You see what I'm saying? Because eventually it's going to be God's will to put in the son of perdition into power. And if it was God, if, if God said, are you going to put this man in power? Yeah, put him in the power. I say, yeah, put him in power. Even though I know he's going to do all this wickedness. Why? Because that's what God's will is. Because God said, don't worry about it. I'm going to still take care of my people, even with him in charge. You see? But when people start assuming to know things, and you don't go to God, and you don't ask, you see what I'm saying? You start making mistakes. And just because you got partial revelation, just like Samuel, he got partial revelation. The Lord gave him a partial revelation. The king is among Jesse's sons. Now, once you get there, then I'm going to tell you exactly who it is. Now, again, this message ain't for people that don't know what it is to hear from the Lord. If you don't understand that God can send a prophet to you, if you don't understand that God can speak to you directly, if you don't understand that God can speak to you through the word of God, through your reading and studying, if you don't understand that God, you know, can speak to you in dreams and visions, if you don't understand that, you don't know what it is for God to tell you something specifically. See, you still trying to figure out whether or not God is real or not. Those of us who know, because we've had the experience of God telling us specific things and watching them come to pass. You see? So that's the difference. That's why, you know, the natural man cannot receive the things that be of God because they're spiritually, they're the foolishness unto him. You see what I'm saying? But we who have the spirit of God, things are revealed to us by his spirit. So when you have his spirit, you start praying and asking him for what is his will. You see, you don't assume. Just because you got partial revelation, you don't assume. Right? And the Lord had to jump on me big time for this. The reason why I'm sharing it, big time. The Lord, through the years, had to jump on me. My first 10 to 12 years when I was saved, the Lord had to jump on me big time, time and time again. You're assuming. Quit assuming. You know what I'm saying? That's why I know the story about David and Samuel. You know what I mean? How Samuel went up there and he just kept assuming. You know? And that's why a lot of people, they go through the whole dating process. You don't want to wait. You don't want to just go to God. And you don't want to just ask God, is this it? No, what you do is you're going to play the little dating roulette. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay, well, maybe it's this one. No, it ain't this one. Okay, I'm breaking up with you. Oh, maybe it's this one. Oh, it ain't this one. Oh, okay, I'm breaking up with you. Maybe it's this one. Oh, I love you so much. I want to be with you. Oh, it ain't you. I'm breaking up. I'm, I'm going with somebody else. Right? You just keep going in. You in and out of order. You see what I'm saying? And the truth of the matter is you ain't asked God one time, is this the person that I'm supposed to be with? You see? Because if you're with the wrong person, y'all can have a great relationship for 20 years. And guess what? Then next thing you know, you a widow or a widower. Crying and whining. Why, why did this happen, Lord? Why did you take this away from me? This was a good person. And this was this, this, this. You ain't doing my will. You said to death do your part. So I got to, why don't you got to go? You see what I'm saying? You were never in my will the whole time. You never asked me who, who, who it was that, I, that you were supposed to be with. You never came to me. You just assumed. Right? You assumed that the man needs to be a Christian. The man needs to be, you know, you know, to, to know the word of God. The man needs to be able to speak whatever. You you had a certain list of standards, but you never went for the direct revelation of who it is. You never said, Lord, Father, I come to you. You tell me who it is that you appointed. You ain't like Abraham's servant. You ain't trying to figure out what God wants for you. You're trying to figure out what you want, then tell God to give you what you want. That's why the country is divided to this day. Over this stupid election, the country is divided because everybody's sitting up here talking about, well, we want Trump. Well, we want Biden. Well, we want Trump. Neither one of them. And these are Christians. You got Christian Democrats that's talking about, we want Biden. We praying for Biden. Then you got Republican Democrat. I mean, Republican Christians are sitting up here, oh, we want Trump. We praying for Trump. And a lot of these Republicans that came out and said the Lord told them Trump was going to win. Guess what that tells me? Because God ain't told me nothing. But that tells me I'm watching. Because if he don't win, that tells me you're a false prophet. Now, I know not to listen to you. I know that you're a false prophet. See, you put your credibility on the line when you said, thus saith the Lord. If thus saith the Lord, it better come to pass. Period. You see? So I didn't mean to get into all this, but hey, it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? But I'm trying to tell y'all. And now, and then now in your own personal life with the division, with people not understanding things, 
where people just jumping up and assuming we're coming into the days where you've got to know God's will and walk in his will. The day of partial understanding, partial knowledge is going to be done away with. We're coming into a season of greater revelation, a season of greater understanding. We got to draw nigh to the most high and rest in the shadow of the almighty. We got to go there now because the, the, the persecution is getting ready to come. It's already here, right? No more just walking in partial revelation. You keep praying until you get the fullness thereof, until the Lord says, this is it. Walk in it. Amen. I got you, right? Okay, so God bless all of y'all. Hopefully y'all, you know what I mean, if you miss it, go rewind it back. You see what I'm saying? Watch the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I help, hopefully this message will help you. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 thank, I pray that the Lord will open up your eyes to see, your ears to hear, for you to receive the message, you know what I'm saying, and for it to build you up and to edify you in Christ Jesus. All right, y'all have a blessed day. God bless all of y'all in Jesus' name. Yahshua the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen.